All right, welcome to Baking with Scott. Today, we're going to make banana bread. This is the secret family banana bread recipe. It's not really much of a secret, uh, and it's not really different from banana bread recipes that you'll find online, but it comes from a cookbook that my mom has that's a bunch of dilapidated pieces of paper stuck together with a you know, red plastic ring uh, binding. I can't tell you what the name of the cookbook is, uh, but my, we, we've been making this banana bread in my family for a long time. You know, whenever you got some bananas and they turn brown, what are you supposed to do with them? Into the banana, it's time to make banana bread. Uh, the other thing you need to know about this banana bread recipe is it's not really a bread. It actually says in the cookbook, banana cake. You know, bread has yeast, water, salt, and flour. It rises, right? This has flour. It doesn't have water, salt, or yeast. It doesn't rise. It has eggs and sugar and all the things that make it a cake. So why do you call it banana bread? You call it banana bread so you don't feel bad about eating it for breakfast, which is when I recommend eating it. All right, so let's go check out the ingredients first. All right, so the first ingredient you're going to need is one stick of butter, which is a half a cup. All right, so the thing people got to remember about the stick of butter is you can't just take it out of the fridge and immediately start baking, right? You need to plan ahead uh, and take the stick of butter out of the fridge before you start baking, like a few hours before, so it gets a little, gets a little soft, right? Especially if you're mixing by hand, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to mix if you let it get soft. But you don't want to melt it completely, right? Melting the butter, you're going to get a different kind of, you know, the texture of the cake is not going to be, not going to be good. Uh, what you can do if you're really skillful is maybe like put it in the microwave for like a second, one second, right, to try to soften it up uh, if you're in a hurry. But the best method, I think, is to leave the butter out at room temperature for a little while uh, before you're ready to start baking, and then it'll be good to go. Also, um, I, I recommend using unsalted butter for baking. You know, I use salted butter for putting on bread uh, and other things, but I use unsalted butter for baking. If the recipe wanted salt, it would say salt on it. And if the recipe does say salt on it, well, you don't want to go adding extra salt that's included in the butter. You just want to include the right amount of salt that the recipe asks for. So unsalted butter, leave it out so it gets soft before you start baking. Of course, it's banana bread that we're making here, so that would not be complete without two bananas. All right, you want to make sure they're nice and brown. No fresh bananas here. Yeah, banana bread is all about, um, you know, making use of the bananas you couldn't eat before they turned brown. If the bananas are still good, why you make a banana bread? Just eat the bananas. Uh, these are actually probably just perfect, right? The insides are definitely squishy, uh, and they're not 100% brown to the point where they're, they're gross and, and moldy or anything. Uh, so, like, this level of brownness, right? Way past the kind where you want to eat, but not to the point where they're ruined. I've heard that you can actually freeze the bananas, right? If they turn brown and you're not ready to make banana bread right away, you could supposedly freeze the bananas, take them out, thaw them, and then make a banana bread. Uh, of course, don't freeze them also until after they've turned brown. Uh, but I actually haven't tried this. I've frozen a bunch of bananas in my freezer, but I've never tried to thaw them and use them yet. Uh, and I happen to, I, I would do that now, uh, but I just happen to have two <laughs> perfect bananas that, are, that have not been frozen. So I'm not going not gonna to risk it with the frozen guys yet. yet. All right, one KitchenAid stand mixer. Now you don't actually need to have the stand mixer. Right? This isn't absolutely mandatory. I've made a ton of banana bread just mixing by hand. Uh, but now that I have a stand mixer, of course I'm going to use it. <laughs> uh, the first time I used this to make banana bread, I was actually shocked at how fast I was able to make it the banana bread thanks to the, the speed of the mixer. Right? I thought it would just you know, take some of the work off my arm uh, to make it easier, but no. It, the speed of you're gonna, this banana bread is going to be done so fast. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, of course you're going to need... A baking pan, right? The the bit, banana bread comes out in a, in a loaf shape. So you're going to be pouring the batter. It's a cake. It has batter, not dough. Uh, you're going to be pouring the batter into this thing. Uh, you know, this this is actually a little bit narrow. Usually people use a, a shorter and wider one than this, but this one makes up for its narrowness. It's a little bit taller than the usual pan. So I don't know the exact dimensions, um, but you know, you can buy the the disposable ones at the grocery store also, the foil ones. 
So you're gonna don't don't start making the banana bread if you don't have the pan ready because you're gonna finish this batter and be like, uh, what do I bake this in? Two eggs. You're gonna need one teaspoon of baking powder. Don't confuse this with the baking soda. Make sure you use the right one at the right time because you're also gonna need a teaspoon of baking soda. Don't use the wrong one at the right time. Baking soda and baking powder are not the same thing. One teaspoon baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda. Sour cream. I don't think you're gonna taste the difference depending on what fat level of sour cream you go for, but uh, this is the sour cream that I get, so you can get the same one if you want. You're only going to need four tablespoons. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Make sure you get the real deal, none of that imitation vanilla extract. It's gonna be expensive, but you know, you want it to taste good, right? We're going to use one and one quarter cup of pure, delicious white sugar. Oh yeah, sugar. And then last, but certainly not least, we need one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Yeah. You can't really make anything without flour, can you? All right, now that we got our ingredients under control, uh, I don't think we're missing anything. Baking time, yes. Step one, we are going to preheat the oven to 350. You don't really need it that hot to, to make, you know, banana bread, I guess. All right, but make sure it's preheated really well, get a nice, you know, even heating going on. All right, so for our first step, we are going to be combining the sour cream and the baking Soda, baking soda. So, four tablespoons of sour cream. I know it seems like a lot, but you know, hey, why not? Sour cream is delicious. Nope. It's kind of hard to measure a, a teaspoon, a tablespoon even, of sour cream. Uh, but I just sort of estimate it, and I actually err on the side of using too much sour cream. Uh, the reason I do that is because, you know, you're even after, you, you know, you measure here, but some of the sour cream is going to get stuck in this bowl here. So even if I measure super precisely, right, uh, a bunch of sour cream will be left behind in the bowl. So it's better to put too much in the bowl. That way, when you take it out of the bowl, three tablespoons, uh, that way, when you take the sour cream out of the bowl, you'll be closer to the uh, four tablespoons that you were aiming for in the first place. Now we're gonna take our one teaspoon of baking soda. Very nice. And mix these together pretty good. So I don't know, I'm not sure what the chemical reaction is exactly, uh, but some chemical reaction happens between the baking soda and the sour cream. And that's why you mix them in advance, so that can sort of get started, uh, and then before you mix it into everything else. All right, and step two, we're gonna, well, who knows what step number this is, but this is the most delicious part. We're gonna make my favorite thing, one of my favorite things in the world, butter sugar. Yes. In goes the butter. One and a quarter cups of sugar. So we got the big old one cup. Oh, look at all that sugar. Yeah, you think this is a, a bread with one cup, one over a cup of sugar? Look how much a cup of sugar is. Whoa, that's a lot. Oh man, look at all that sugar. Woo! One and a quarter cups of sugar. Oh, baby. All right, gonna lock that down and get our mix on. I want to make sure this is really well creamed. See, if I was doing this by hand, it would be nowhere near uh, this level of mixing yet. All right. Seems like we got ourselves some butter sugar. Yeah. Now that we got our butter sugar, we're going egg. We got to do one egg at a time. So in goes one egg. Make sure you don't get any shell into the, into the bowl. Some more egg drippings here. There we go. So one egg. 
Punk. Uh, we can get our mix on now. Looking real good. One egg, two egg. See, now it really starts to look like batter once you get the egg in there, right? Smells good. I mean, it is butter egg sugar. I don't think it needs to actually be mixed more, but, you know, more mixing doesn't hurt. Now, remember that sour cream that we mixed together before with the baking soda? Now is it's time to shine. In goes... The sour cream. In you go. See, look how much of the sour cream is still left in this bowl, right? And there's no way you're getting that out of there. That's why I over measure the, the four tablespoon. Looks like our preheating oven is done. All right, next goes the banana. But first, we got to mash the banana. All right, so now it's banana time. Uh, first, take the bananas, peel them. Mm. Hmm. You could actually go a little browner than this. I thought that they were... Uh, they felt squishy from the outside, but see, like, see, you want it to be brown the whole banana, right? But this is still going to be fine. These bananas are definitely full of flavor. I can smell them from here. But, you know, the longer they ripen, the more sugary they are, right? So that's, that's what you want in a, in a cake. Okay, and now you got to mash it with a fork until you get banana mush. Um, oop. There's a string in there. Get out of there. I want banana mush, right? To act like you're uh, you're making baby food, right? That's what you want to do here. I guess you could even buy, uh, you know, just banana mush, <laughs> like baby food bananas. But um, it's probably more expensive than mushing some bananas. Uh, and I don't know what other stuff they put in baby food. I don't imagine it's just a hundred percent banana, you know banana right but you want to keep going until this is like mush right like you can tell there's some still some solid banana bits in there and it's like no 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 it should be like applesauce consistency right is what we're going for here all right now we got ourselves some banana mush all right so now that we got banana mush Into the batter it goes. Also, keep in mind, right? The uh, you know we put a cup and a quarter of sugar into here, um, but the banana is also loaded with sugar. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's plenty of fructose going down. Mmm. 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 I got some on my hand and licked it. That was delicious. Mixing time. All right, so while the banana's going there, oh, it looks like it's pretty much good already. Uh, we're gonna go with the baking powder and the vanilla. It's like a one teaspoon baking powder. Powder. One teaspoon baking powder, not soda. Ba baking powder, in you go. And then we're gonna go teaspoon of vanilla. That is looking mighty fine. 
Okay. So now we're going to go for the flour. This is the part where you can really make a mess of your kitchen if flour goes poof, poof, poof all over the place. So be really careful. Try not to let that happen. Uh, uh, it's one and a half cups of flour. So I'm going to do six quarter cups. One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you don't lose count and forget how much flour you put in there. Uh, we're going to put in a quarter cup at a time. They should all mix in there nicely. Uh, and we'll have some really good batter uh, when it's all done. One. Two, 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 don't lose count, two, three, 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 four, four. Four, five, and here comes number six, the final flower. All right, we finished our batter uh, for the banana cake bread. <laughs> uh, but there's one more thing we have to do before we can pour it into the pan, right? Because we just pour it into the pan and bake it. It'll come, you know, it'll bake perfectly. But how will you get it out of the pan? And this is why we need to flour up and grease the pan beforehand. And just spraying it with a bunch of Pam in advance is not going to cut it. So I'm going to show you my special, not really special at all, just my regular old technique for uh, greasing up the pan so that way when we are all done, uh, the, the bread will just come right out of there. All right, so here we are at the sink. What, a, what the heck are we doing at the sink? Here's our pan. Um, you know, and here's all the stuff that we made dirty <laughs> while we were making the banana bread. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a different stick of butter, not the one that we... Uh, not the one that we used for baking, but a different one. Uh, you could use some other kind of oil, uh, but you know, real butter is the awesomest. Right? And what we're going to do here is we're going to use this to grease the heck up out of the inside of this pan, right? Like this. I'm going to make sure the entire bottom, the corners, right? Uh, and pretty much every every surface uh, of the inside of this pan is covered in butter. <laughs> uh, you might be like, "Oh my God, you know you're gonna you're gonna make your uh, cake all buttery on the outside, but that is not the case. Right, this part is going to be sticking to the pan. Uh, it will not be, you know, mixing in with the uh, with the cake and ruining it. The next thing we're going to do is get some flour in there, and this is why we did this over the sink. Shake that flour all around. See now the flour is sticking to the butter. Right, shake a shake a shake a shake a shake a shake a. Right, we're going to turn the pan in every direction and let gravity move that, you know, lump cup of flour. Well, I used a quarter cup, right? So that it touches every surface that has been buttered. Shake a shake a shake a. Yeah, I didn't get the corners as well as I tried to, but that's okay. All right, as you can see, the inside of this pan now has been very butter floured, right? It is, it is good to go. Nothing is going to stick on the inside of this. You can be sure about that. All right. In you go.
shake the pan up nice to get the batter all evenly situated. You don't want one side to be way bigger than the other, right? We are just about done with this bread. I can't believe it. That was so fast, right? We hardly did anything. Um, but yeah, all we have to do now is put it in the oven for about an hour. Uh, and then we're going to give it the old toothpick test so we know when it's done. All right. Oop, I'm holding the camera and putting it in the oven at the same time. In you go. Ta-da. There it is. Closed. There it is, bacon in the oven. In about an hour, we're gonna have us some delicious bread. Mm, it seems like things are coming along pretty nicely. That sound can mean only one thing. It's time to check the bread. Mmm. That is one good looking bread, if I do say so, but we're not sure if it's done yet. Usually it needs a little more time. And in order to figure that out, we do the toothpick test. So to do the toothpick test, you're gonna need yourself a wooden toothpick, okay? And you take the wooden toothpick and you stick it in the top of the bread, and then you pull it out. And then you inspect the toothpick. And as you can see, this toothpick, after being inserted in the bread, does not have any dough stuck to it. If any of the bread was still needed more cooking, right, it would still be sticky and would get stuck to this toothpick. But the toothpick went in, and it came out perfectly clean. And that's how you know this is done and does not need any more cooking, and it is safe to turn the oven off. Let's just take one more look at our delicious bread out of the oven here. Mmm. How about that? All right. All we have to do now is wait until this cools off, and we will cut and taste a slice. It's ready. We're going to eat the bread. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, notice, because... We did that uh, buttering and flouring of the pan in advance. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm confident. I haven't actually tried this yet. I'm confident it's just going to drop out. Oh, oh, look at that. Look, oh, oh, are you kidding me? Look at that. That is, look how pro, look how pro this is. Can you, can you not deny how pro this is? Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to cut us a slice now. Look at this beautiful bread. Uh, we're cutting. Oh, look at that crumb. Holy crap. All right, now, for the real test, the eating. Mmm. Um. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. Perfect banana bread right here. I'm glad it came out perfectly in the video. It usually comes out this good, but... Mmm. Mm. The outside is crusty. You know... It's a real crust, but it's still very, very soft for a crust, right? And then the inside is, oh, so moist and delicious and still warm, mm, but not hot because we let it cool for an hour. Mm. All right. So now the next time you got two brown bananas, you know what to do, right? Banana cake bread. We done.